With recent improvements in battery technology, the small lawn and garden equipment industry is starting to offer some legitimate alternatives to gas engines. You can get pretty good battery powered versions of chainsaws, string trimmers, push mowers, blowers, and riding mowers, and even small cultivators are available in both battery and electric versions. But for some reason, you still can't get a full size tiller rotivator in anything but gas. This has puzzled me since a good deep ripping rotivator is pretty much essential in any climate without a significant frost depth to break up and decompact the soil. Usually when you run into market gaps like this, it's because there's some sort of technological limitation like the thing just needs too much power to be feasible. But I started to doubt that after my neighbor gave me this 16 inch heavy-ish duty self-propelled tiller that only had a 3.5 horsepower gas engine. That's about two and a half kilowatts. Now she gave me this thing because it needed a carburetor rebuild, but since I already had this fully functional 5 horsepower or 3.75 kilowatt Honda pressure washer engine that was an exact fit, I just swapped it in and went. The Honda engine is a much more modern and environmentally friendly engine, and I've had no trouble out of it whatsoever. But even for a fuel efficient engine like this, I was surprised at how little gasoline this thing uses even when deep ripping through compacted decomposed granite that constitutes my soil. And that only served to further my suspicions about the amount of power it takes to run a rotivator, but since we actually do use a single a lot, I held off doing any sort of experimentation to see. Now that changed when a flower farmer friend of ours posted that she had this busted tiller that she didn't need, and I ended up trading her a half a truckload of split hardwood for it, which is worth around $80 here. The story is that her brother disassembled it for some maintenance and couldn't get it back together, and she stumbled into a deal on a bigger one while trying to find somebody to fix it. I wasn't worried about the disassembled engine since I was going to convert it to electric anyway. Going by the grainy secondhand picture, it looked like the same model that I already had, but it turns out it was a lot bigger and had a lot of upgraded features. Since it was rated for the larger engine and the wheel clutch controls and the reverse gear were better suited to the gas engine anyway, I decided that I would just put the Honda engine on the big one and then convert the smaller one to electric. And what convinced me that I could make this conversion work was a high power DC pump motor that I'd salvaged from a scrapped forklift. This motor has a continuous rating of up to 9.2 horsepower at 48 volts or around 7 kilowatts. And I actually built a pretty serious electric go-kart maybe 17, 18 years ago with it, so I knew it had some monstrous torque. And though it is dual rated for 36 and 48 volts, I decided to run it off 24 volts since the real estate on this thing is going to be at a premium and derating the motor to 24 volts will drop it to a similar 4.8 horsepower at 1300 rpm at full load. Before swapping the engine onto the bigger tiller I took some rpm readings and calculated the pulley ratio and found that this motor would be right on the money with direct drive at 24 volts to keep the rpm of the tines the same as with the gas engine.
put an electric motor on it. So this thing will run on batteries. I don't want a battery to the battery on it. It never runs out. Well, it did. Um, so I can never get my battery dead. Uh, okay. Alexa, how many millimeters is 0 0.685 inches? 0 0.685 inches is 17.4 millimeters. I had intended from the very beginning to connect the motor shaft directly to the gearbox, but mocking it up showed me that the motor would just be too close to the ground. The motor mount is something that I made for a different project that I didn't end up using. I briefly considered using a universal joint and mounting the motor at an angle, but the maximum angle that I could run the universal joint was 10 degrees before I risked breaking it with the torque. I finally settled on mounting the motor in the same way as the engine, so I went ahead and finished the front of the mount to act as a bumper and guard for the motor. I found a pulley for the motor that gave me the proper drive ratio and a spare drill press V belt was the correct length and the original clutch pulley will work perfectly as a tensioner. I wired it to some batteries and disengaged the drive wheels for a test. The ammeter shows that the motor draws around 24 amps and the tines are spinning at around 212 RPM. The overall drive ratio between the motor and tines is 10 to 1 so the motor is running at 2120 RPM with no load. I bumped it to 24 volts and the amp stayed the same but the no load speed jumped to around 4600 RPM. The motor ramped up nicely and the max current was around 100 amps with just on off control so I won't need the motor control. Okay. It does spin a lot faster than the gas engine with no load, but this controller doesn't have any feedback, it wouldn't help with that. And 4600 RPM is well within the safe speed of the motor. We'll see where the speed is when it's under load and go from there. I can always drop to 12 volts or do a 1224 series parallel setup if it's too fast. Experience with this tiller has taught me that the center of gravity should be just behind the drive wheel so the machine balances to rest on the tines, but it should also rest securely on the nose if I tip it forward to clean out the tines. I played with different battery positions and this arrangement gave me the proper balance without having to make major modifications to the guard or make the machine too wide. I made the battery box using one and a half inch 120 wall steel tubing and angle and attached it using some existing holes in the frame with some tabs and a couple of captive bolts. Then I modified the guard to sit an inch lower and attached a couple of tabs to the battery box to mount it. To mount the handle, I welded a tube onto the bottom of the battery box, inserted a piece of half inch poly tubing to act as a bushing, and threaded a piece of half inch OD shaft for the axle. After breaking plan A with a conduit bender, plan B was a piece of half inch Schedule 80 steel pipe from a previous project. I welded some tabs to the end of the tube and mounted it to the frame. Once I was happy with the angle of the handle, I welded together a third mounting position between the batteries and bolted it together. After painting the battery box, I started to make some covers for the motor, but after thinking about it, I decided that it would be presumptuous to build covers before I tested it. Presumptuousness is bad luck, so I bolted the battery box and handle back onto the machine and started working on the electricals. I had a brake lever from some kind of scooter that had a brake lamp switch built into it, and I'll use it to directly control a high current solenoid. Since the switch is only rated for two amps and it's wired normally closed, I ran a second solenoid on the toggle switch that I can hit if things get out of hand. I temporarily mounted the solenoids to a bracket, wired everything up, and took it outside for a spin. So it does 
doesn't work. Driving it over here, the highest I got was like 28, 30 amps. So let's see how it goes. bottomed out. The motor bogs down nicely under load and I could only get around 90 amps if I got aggressive and held the machine back. I tilled an area of open garden and the machine is stable and easy to steer. The only problem is that the motor carries a lot of inertia and it coasts a long time before it stops. I topped up the batteries overnight and added a power gauge so I could really test it out. I have two jobs to do today so we can see how long the batteries last. I'm going to cut in another one of these raised beds. First I'll set the tiller to a couple of inches and chop up this sod so I can use it to finish repairing the area where the garden used to be. The chopped up roots will transplant just fine and any of it that dies will fertilize the stuff that lives. I tilled the raised bed pretty deep and the machine never went over 90 amps. I tilled the old garden area to a few inches deep and a lot deeper where the slope needed to be more gradual. I added some grass seed, graded the slope with a rake, and went over it a few more times to smooth it out and bury the seed. Since I still had around 40% battery left, I added some composted straw and crushed pine bark and tilled it as deep as it would go. It's not too often that a homebrew modification like this actually makes a machine work better than original. The machine weighed 120 pounds before the conversion, but I had to end up adding about 75 pounds of weight above the drive wheels to keep the thing from taking off when the tines bit in or hit a big rock. So it was right at 200 pounds how I was using it. The finished weight of the machine is 248 pounds or 112 kilos, which is 48 pounds or 22 kilos more than when I started, and that really helps to keep the machine planted when I hit a big rock or something. It's really well balanced too. The motor runs at around 2000 RPM when it's digging and the high no load speed actually makes it fast enough that I don't need to disengage the wheels to drive it around the farm. The motor is only barely warm even when I'm using it hard for a long time. I actually had to park it in the shade to make sure that it wasn't just the sunlight heating it up. The only modifications that I need to make are sealing the motor housing, adding a brake, and making some guards. If anything the machine actually has too much battery life. I tilled for almost two hours and the machine could have gone for at least another another 30 to 40 minutes before I got down to 20%. The battery gauge showed that I used about 1.84 kilowatt hours and a watt meter says I put 2.16 kilowatt hours back in, so the electricity cost me about 19 cents even after factoring the charger's 85% efficiency. The gas engine would have probably used at least half a gallon of premium to do the same work. I still don't understand why you can't buy something like this commercially. This thing isn't very efficient since it wastes 700 watts just spinning up the drivetrain and I couldn't even get it to use more than 2400 watts. I'm sure that a properly designed machine would use half that power to do the same work. If I had used 60 amp hour group 24 lead acid troller motor batteries, which are the same size and weight as these lithium batteries at 120 bucks a piece, the runtime would probably be around 90 minutes with plenty of reserve, even as inefficient as it is. Pair those with a pretty big e-bike motor, and I bet you could do this with new parts for under a thousand bucks, including the tiller. I'll make an additional video with a lot more technical detail and post it on my other page. I'll put a link in the description when I get it together. Don't forget to like and subscribe and support our clean farming projects on Patreon.